to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Um, it's always my joy and my privilege. Hallelujah. God taught me years ago that He can do without me. Hallelujah. Years ago that you can do without me. So when when people begin to act indispensable, they reveal the realm that they are functioning in. Hallelujah. Um, humility is not just a state, it's a realm as a result of an experience. The Bible says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. And at the end of that encounter, Isaiah said, Send me. I always ask this question who sent him from chapter 1 to 5 hallelujah so we thank God for what God is doing in this ministry I've had the opportunity to say this through the years please everyone who has the opportunity to attend these conferences don't take it for granted hallelujah it takes a lot of energy resources prayer fasting to put this up together Hallelujah. So receive and uh, I'd like us to just stand in one minute and honor the servant of God for putting this platform. Can you just appreciate him? God bless you, Pastor. God bless you. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Um, the immaturity of competition that happens in the body of Christ is a deficiency of the organization or an understanding of God's organization and his structure of operation. Hallelujah. Because when you know what God has given you, you will know what he has not given you. And you will honor and respect those who carry it. Hallelujah. It's a sign of great immaturity for a man to step into a place and begin to... Uh -uh. It is God that exalts men. And he designed it in such a way that if you exalt him, he put the glory in you, so you will also be exalted. He said, Father, the hour has come, John 17 verse 1. He said, glorify now thy son to the end that thy son will bring glory to you. Hallelujah. And so we thank God for this morning. And God is doing great and prophetic things in this meeting. Um, I know that it's a wonderful thing God is doing and I pray that God will really open our eyes to see what he is doing. Let's just look at a scripture before we begin. Genesis 3. Thank you Jesus. Let the name of the Lord be exalted. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. There's nothing as honorable as a man being powerful, mighty in the spirit, and yet maintains a statue of humility. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says, when you go into a place, it said, go and sit at the back. This was a prophetic language. We have too many people wanting to sit in front, Pastor. It says, sit at the back. That grace will speak and it will carry you to the rightful place. There are many people who are wrongly sitting in the front and they will be taken to the back. It will happen. We want more of you. We want more of you. Jesus, the more we know you. Truly, the more we want to know you. Jesus. More of you. Hallelujah. 
you know pastor just said something and i wanted to laugh but i had to package myself because i was about to come up and preach he talked about men of god who try to preach messages and say the miracles that they have done it's a sign that you are not even making any impact if you have to announce it according to proverbs 31 he said let her walk speak for her at the gates she will not speak for her works he said let her walks job said in the day when the secret of the lord was upon my tabernacle the young men will see me and hide their faces he said the ancient will stand men have to be the ones to testify the bible says it was noised abroad that jesus was in town didn't tell us who noised it it was noised so all this bragging about miracles i did this of course there is a place of declaring the works of the lord hallelujah but many ministers do that and they never tell you what happened now pastor they start giving you stories and useless encounters that happen i mean not useless in the sense but the attitude they put towards it something that happened by the mercy of god not their spiritual level god was in the meeting walking it's just that they were on stage while it was happening and they are convinced that it happened because of them because they can't reproduce it again it happened because of the hunger of the people or a general that was hidden in the crowd who was commanding and anointing and did not speak hallelujah if god opens our eyes to the realm of the spirit it will break our pride in ways we will not recover from it i'm always aware that when i stand to minister like this i'm not impressing everybody there are certain silent people they may not talk but they have an identity a badge a charisma in the spirit mm. so when you maintain that posture you are able to communicate life in a way that will minister to people bless god for the wisdom that people are learning in this ministry this is the kind of revelation that will produce mighty men hallelujah the bible says in the cave called adulam to David was brought certain weak and beggarly people, but he began to make warriors out of them. To the extent that the Bible begins to give us the chronicles of their exploits. And said, among those weak men came mighty men. One who would fight and his hands would cleave to the sword. And David said, oh that I would drink of the pool of Bethlehem. And these three mighty men, they were men who have been trained apostles symbols see let me tell you something the proof that a man of god is great is in the lives and the success he has multiplied in others not how much he has built an empire for himself thank you jesus genesis 3 i also appreciate every servant of god in this place the lord bless you thank you once again 24 Genesis 3 24 or oh, let's start from 23 therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from where he was taken so he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way of the tree of life please look up i just want to explain a few things to us before we start the bible says that because man had you see the tree of life was meant to keep man in whatever state he was do you understand the tree of life sustains you in whatever state you are in and now that he had partaken of this of the forbidden tree hallelujah if he ate the tree of life again he will remain in that state and redemption will be impossible hallelujah and so the man was driven out from the garden and to guard the garden was not a gate it was a cherubim and a flaming sword so that whoever will get back into that reality must encounter these two experiences the cherubim and the flaming sword hallelujah and this is what happens when we come to prophetic meetings like this because you see it's one thing to see the kingdom it's one thing to know about the kingdom it's one thing to preach about the kingdom but it's another thing to enter the kingdom experientially 
and so many of us may not understand the degrees of transformation that are happening in our lives you will just turn and find out that you've been elevated in a realm and you've been made to have power with God and with men and when Daniel was traveling the Bible says that when he was on his way coming the prince of Persia that spiritual wickedness that is over the territory called Persia attempted to stop him and because the organization of angels is so defined they don't break ranks it was not given on to Gabriel to fight not because he does not possess the power but he is the archangel in charge of service and so he had to depend on the spiritual understanding of Daniel to keep on praying and as a result Michael was sent Michael came and prevailed over the angel and he was allowed he said and then I am come to give you understanding hallelujah Joel 2 hallelujah blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain let the inhabitants of the earth tremble for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is near at hand, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, like the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people. Now you begin to watch the description of this army. A great people and a strong. There had not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it even to the years of many generations a fire devoured before them and behind them a flame burned the land is like the garden of eden before them and behind them a desolate wilderness yea and nothing shall escape them the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and like horsemen so shall they run like the noise of chariots upon the tops of the mountains they shall leap look at the structure of this kind of army Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoured the stubble, shall the strong people set in battle array. Before their face, the people shall be much pain. All faces shall gather blackness. The Bible says they shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the world like men of war. And they shall march everyone on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall anyone trust another. They shall walk everyone in his path and when they fall upon the sword they shall not be wounded they shall run to and fro in the city and they shall run upon the world they shall climb upon the houses and shall enter in at the windows like a thief the earth shall quake before these kinds of people and the heavens shall tremble the sun and the moon shall be dark and the star shall withdraw her shining 11 he says and the lord the owner of this great army shall utter his voice from before his army for his camp is very great for he is strong who executed his word for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible who can bear it hallelujah the Bible begins to give us a description of these kinds of people and it tells us that these are a kind of people the Bible does not mention the leadership of this army it just tells us they are a people who are mighty and then after it keeps us in suspense for a while it tells us the captain of that army he said the Lord shall utter his voice and this army shall hear in other words it will not be an army that is built upon a person or a doctrine it shall be a structure that answers only to one voice and one name hallelujah hallelujah and this morning briefly i would like to just take a little journey with us to understand how that god makes a man a son experientially hallelujah the journey the price the cost of sonship what does it take for man to possess such authority to be able to stand and legislate and listen please i'm not talking about um just power to heal the sick raise the dead cast out devil 
I'm talking of authority to command influence over territories. Hallelujah. But this is the heritage of the sons in Christ. To possess an ability in the spirit. The Bible says, The heaven of heavens belongs to the Lord, but the earth has he given to the sons. And so we must be able to know how to take charge and take what we call dominion. Unfortunately, what many people call dominion is grossly short of the description of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, when you get born again, you give your heart to the Lord, you come to a point where Jesus becomes um, not necessarily Lord of your life, but you acknowledge the fact that He is Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When that happens, then the Holy Spirit comes upon you, especially for we Pentecostals. You fall, you shake. Hallelujah. Ba -ba 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 -ba, and then you get up. And then what happens from there? Because this journey is what has been misunderstood by many believers. And so they do not know how to align themselves to the Holy Spirit to continue the journey. Hallelujah. And in many um, circles, we just teach people that once you are filled with the Holy Ghost, the next thing is to begin to press to see one drop of anointing here and there one word of knowledge one gift did you know that the bible gives those experiences a name what does he call them gifts what is a gift you've collected one so what is a gift this is a minister's conference what is a gift no 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 whatever you say you are right don't worry it's not a prophetic question it's a direct word is a gift <laughs> hallelujah a gift is an expression of love and kindness to you has nothing to do with your merit of it hallelujah and so when the bible says the gift of the spirit it's amazing that a man brags over a gift is that not interesting <laughs> he calls them what gifts the only reason is in the church of christ we have had only few portraits that have moved beyond the realm of gifts this is the reason why the central pivot and the attracting factor for the average believer is to get to a point where he walks in gift but having give, given us a comprehensive description of this gift then in 13 he says behold i show you a more excellent way ah that means there are other ways the bible begins to give us a description in isaiah 11 talking about the fullness of the spirit the spirit of the lord the spirit of this not a gift the spirit of it hallelujah so when you get born again and you begin to walk with god the lord begins to it is in the character of god to build believers according to his name and according to dimensions hallelujah you will not just stand what we call spiritual growth please write what we call spiritual growth is not just praying in tongues spiritual growth means two things number one your degree of conformity to the structure and the character and the nature of the christ your degree of conformity For when you get born again, I know that the Bible says we are complete in him. But um, you see, you must understand the prophetic nature of scripture and the way that spiritual realities are communicated. Because it is when, like pastor said, people judge scripture from the flesh. And so they say the Bible says we are complete in him. There's nothing else that should be done. But the Bible says there were many lights. So that's not a lie. But he said there were two great lights and in the presence of those two great lights we could not see those other lights again hallelujah many lights so spiritual growth is first and foremost your degree of conformity and this is the reason why the bible says when he led captivity captive he gave gifts unto men hallelujah first apostles and prophets Ephesians. hallelujah first apostles and prophets and then teachers and evangelists and pastors for what 
not building ministries and names and wearing suits he said for the equipping of he already called them saints but they must be equipped are you seeing that he didn't say for turning men into saints for the equipping of the saints comma that they the saints will now do the work of the ministry so what we call ministry is actually the equipping of gifts the fivefold are not the ministers they are the gift that equip the body to do the ministry hallelujah he said to the end that we all come into that means there is an expectation this journey is not a fake journey you should mold into a portrait with time hallelujah so if your christian experience is not gaining a shape and a posture over time you are following the wrong map hallelujah he said to the end that we all come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of christ as a result not being tossed to and fro by every wind and so spiritual growth measures your degree of conformity how much you have come into experiential alignment with the life of god his culture his principles his way of life your depth of oneness how much you have been able to intermingle yourself with the christ number two spiritual growth is measured in how much you have been able to contact the authority of the Christ and to make it visible in this realm we call it the manifestation of the glory this is where we talk about authority not just power there is a difference between authority and power hallelujah authority is a position power talks of force the agency that gives strength to authority hallelujah if this is my church hallelujah and assuming this lady is an usher the moment i get married to her she has authority correct she may be weak physically but she has authority many people in the body of christ know power but we have little knowledge about authority and jesus kept scanning through his walk in the earth to find out if any man would have that understanding and then one day he found a man the bible calls him the centurion and when jesus he, he beckoned on jesus to heal his son and jesus said all right i'm coming he said no 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 no. you do not need to come because i am not naive about authority for i myself i am a man who is under authority of the roman government and by reason of this position i occupy i can tell a man go and he will go i will tell another come and he will come and if he refuses then power you see that power comes to enforce the strength of authority so when you command a demon to go it is by authority the power of the holy ghost is the agency the ministry of angels and all the spiritual dynamics that happen are the manifestations of power that compels obedience and alignment hallelujah praise the lord and so spiritual growth measures how much don't tell me you are born again and all you have is character alone wonderful but that's not all so a lot of people give all kinds of excuses when they see the manifestation of the spirit in ministries like this and other great ministries they get angry and then they say well the most important thing is your character that's why i'm giving you the full definition because many people have excused it we come the sick come and they go back the oppressed come and they go back they ask the man of god why and he said the most important thing in the spirit is character that's wonderful but you ask jesus christ when john the baptist frustrated in the prison he sent his disciples he said go and ask him are you the messiah or we should expect another this was the same man who baptized jesus and endorsed him now as a result of his frustration he began to ask and jesus did not answer the man he turned and healed the sick casted out devils and said you go and tell john what you saw 
the manifestation of the kingdom commanding authority over territories becoming a principality over the territory that you function in when jesus stepped into gathering the presence and the authority that he carried shook that heavens to the extent that the madman who was a custodian that operated around that territory was the first person to meet with jesus the bible tells us that the madman lived in caves so who told him jesus was coming those were the spirits that were responsible for the boisterous nature of the storm so when jesus said shalom he was not just speaking to the waters he was speaking to all the forces and when he stepped into Gadara, there he met a man who began to negotiate with him because he knew for sure they were going to leave that man. How can, how, how good will it be that you step into an environment and demons know for sure that their time has come? To the extent that they didn't beg and say, leave us. They said, we know we are going to go. There's no controversy about that. So our plea now is not leaving. Our plea is don't take us out of this territory because we have been assigned to function there. This is going to be the character of these men called the sons of God. They will move in signs and wonders and do more miracles unconsciously than they will do consciously. The new rule for greatness in our generation and our time will not be how much power you carry. It will be a different rule. How much you can keep territory stand still. The Bible talks of Joshua. He said he looked at the sun and he told the sun you shall not shift. I change geography. Whatever needs to be altered in the northern and southern hemisphere let it happen because a sun spoken Jesus looked at Lazarus and from standing from that point he made a call that reverberated in Hades and took the spirit of one man and brought him back into his body that's a degree of dominion and authority. You know why he called the name of Lazarus? If he just said come forth, everybody who had died would have come forth. And so he said, I need just one person as an example. I speak from hell. Lazarus! And there was a ripple effect. It shook the earth realm and entered hell and picked up that man called Lazarus and brought him out. And if you understand the way there was embalmment, even if you were not dead, you must die when they finish that embalmment. If by any means you are a Nigerian and you get to pretend by the time they are done with that embalmment, be sure that you are going to die. And so, how did Lazarus rise up from the grave and walk out? Because his legs and his hands were bound. But that same voice brought him until he stood and he said, lose the man and let him go. See, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. All that we have seen is not all that there is. I've studied revivals carefully because the Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience. It didn't say follow deceivers. Follow people who have obtained the promise, not liars and hungry people whose God is their belly. I've had the opportunity to study revivals. And can I tell you something? Do you know that in the days of the Azusa Street, the Wealth Revival, DL Moody Revival, do you know that the newspapers, all the talk of the town was what God was doing in a city? To the extent that they had what they call a spiritual mayor. Alexander Doe was a spiritual mayor over Illinois. He had the authority to say he was going to build a city called Zion. He was tired. Of course, that was not the best of a decision. Hallelujah. But we honor him for demonstrating authority over that city. He bought a property and put a new city in that place. When it was 12 on the dot, everybody in that city must stop wherever you are and pray. Wherever you are, you must stop and pray. He became such a force in that city. But right now, if you see a man's poster on newspaper, two things have happened he paid for it or he has done something wrong and they are telling the world finally exposed this guy has done so so and so and so or 
come for my program signed by the apostle Joshua Selman if your influence is not territorial you are not yet a son we have many local champions shouting in church doing everything but outside the immediate environment there is no operation of the kingdom they have not gained power in the heavens to regulate times and seasons and to compel all things to come into the obedience of christ a man called saint patrick in a land called ireland what a great man he shook that place single-handedly someone had been dead six months the son of the king and he said prove to me that this jesus is alive and they said i know one man called saint patrick they call saint patrick he said i will prove it to you he signed his name saint patrick on the grave he said open it up and they brought that guy alive true story not the type men of god lie in church he said i was there and 80 people fell under the anointing if you understand the move of the spirit it's impossible to know all those things are jargons a symbol of immaturity handling the word of christ craftily and then people clap what a shame and demons are saying ah, ah. but the other people that lived in those generations were hotter than this what is going on and at the end of it a pro protocol leads the man if i may proper beg all those things there must be a higher call I'm giving you a new taste a new appetite for spiritual things hallelujah so when a man begins to walk with God the dimension of his revelation and operation in your life by the Spirit begins to switch because having enjoyed the gifts of the Spirit and all of these things the first thing God begins to do is to put desire in you Proverbs 18 verse 1 it says through desire a man having separated himself intermeddled with all wisdom suddenly you begin to become uncomfortable with status quo it's not an act of rebellion it's a higher call because according to ecclesiastes 3 verse 11 the bible says he makes all things beautiful in his time and he has put a realm a man called eternity he has put eternity in man and every time your walk in time is becoming enormous, God will touch that realm and it will swallow up everything and leave you with a new hunger. Hallelujah. And so when you begin to walk with God, listen to me. He now begins to lead you through experiences. And can I tell you something? This is how men are even supposed to know they are called. It's not just a choice. It's not just by prophecy hallelujah over time as you begin to walk with god his dealings begins to mold you into a fashion and you see that this is an apostolic fashion this is a prophetic fashion this is an evangelistic fashion out of the depth of that experience a message will come out and that becomes your mandate and your assignment we have a the reason why our conviction in the body of christ is not strong is because it's not born out of experiences is born out of story so we know the god of this the god of that which is wonderful but he wants to become your god hallelujah he said i will be their god and they shall be my people praise the lord so when you begin to walk with god he begins to bring you to a point of dissatisfaction please listen to me it begins to make you dissatisfied do you know pastor that the average christian in the church in nigeria is not even interested in going deeper with god the average christian hallelujah and that's why their lack of hunger for god has put so much pressure upon men of god if you don't have ac in your church you are in trouble after two days the people are packing out but the bible tells us no not the bible history tells us that in the days of catherine kuman people will stand by 3 a.m for a service of 6 p.m hunger the day you see people fill up a meeting a celebrity musician is coming or someone 
and the bible says because the people like it so so the men of god have been compelled and right now we have read all kinds of church psychology books that have taught us to convert our church into a business organization that is supposed to feed the appetite of people and we have ministries that have websites that you vote the message on sunday oh yes oh yes no no here you don't know because you are busy building yourself in the spirit but i'm telling you there are realities that happen so you vote it and there are suggestion box if for any reason you were grieved by the gravity of the presence of the spirit in that meeting it is within your power as a citizen of that country and a well-meaning member of that church to communicate your grievances to the end that an amendment be made for tomorrow and now you don't laugh because it is that same congregation that are saying the earth is waiting for the manifestation of sons after this morning you will know whether the world is waiting for you or you are the one who is waiting for us there will be a separation this morning so that you will know whether or not you see truly every time i hear people you go on air almost everybody saying a revival is coming and they are the ones who are corrupting the revival there is no sign of urgency there is no sign of preparedness you see to the extent that you see a man of god who just come on stage and say i'm fulfilled for my past so, so, so years in ministry ah, there's almost no dimension of god i've not seen this is nice this is great and I, I pray for you my prayer for you is that god will help you to comprehend a bit of the things he's showing me and one general is seated in the crowd who is descending from a higher plane and saying lord have mercy This is why when the members begin to open themselves to what God is doing in other places, the Jews become uncomfortable. And then they start structuring messages out of their fear and loss to accommodate the pressures that they are trying to manage. And they begin to put all kinds of devilish prophetic teachings and say, what, what, I am this, the shepherd in this house, hear only me, hear only this. When you hear men of God begin to talk like that, let me tell you the honest truth is an expression of fear and intimidation because the more the people begin to know, the lies you are telling them, they will start discerning it and they will start asking questions with time. Mm. Hallelujah. Oh, pastor, men of God do a, this is a minister's conference. Different things. There are churches when you come, when someone is hungry, the ushers say, what is it? Are you hungry? Are you depressed? Come, we have a kitchen here. Come and relax. And then, right now, because of lack of fire and the presence and the glory of God, people manage all kinds of things. Someone is sleeping around, they say, you know, the construction of the human being is such that uh, with the complexity that exists in our society, it is not unusual for a married man to have an urge for a lady. It happens to all of us. You see that spirit, that universal kind of thing. And so when anything happens, they say, forget, the Bible says uh, this and that. Someone has been smoking marijuana and the church places him on psychological withdrawal symptoms. And we employ all kinds of psychologists and we say, take it gradually. We'll be giving you one, one shot later, half, half. Shame on the church. We brag about it when we go for conferences we stand before people and we even say i have this this and that and this is what it does because the bible says woe to any city whose king is a child Woe. doesn't matter how many years you have been in ministry whose king is a child but the earth creation has been crying because you see they all have voices the birds the earth all of them listen don't 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 be deceived by the structure and the way earth is it's important for you to understand that this earth has voices the winds and everything the prophet will speak to the earth and say oh earth here here and the earth responds at least some of our american films and all the films that we have around have given us a description 
that there are certain things in these laws that we do not know hallelujah and creation keeps discussing and saying ah a prophecy was left that will be delivered from this bondage of corruption did you know that when hurricane katrina was going to hit three days before it hit all the animals there went away oh yes they went away oh they knew it they communicated to themselves and said get out of this place man is at it again and because of his carelessness we're about to suffer something and the men were busy eating burgers and pasta and everything and all the prophets were there bragging and saying i saw it and i ran away why didn't you stop it i'm telling you sometimes i've been praying i say god let me be caught up in the spirit and meet the cloud of witnesses i want to talk with just four of them i want to ask them just a question just a session even if it's five minutes what is your suggestion for our generation hallelujah is there a hunger in you for more now and you see when i talk about ministry i hope you know i'm not just talking i've said it earlier i'm not just talking of pastor and all of this because some of us are imagining god didn't tell me i'm going to carry a pulpit oh. the revival that will break out let me tell you the honest truth rejoiner in his book the final quest having caught up in the spirit he begins to give us a description of this prophetic move and the structure and organogram the revival is not just going to break in churches it's going to be a systemic revival that's why god is raising generals in media in education in different places our job is to bring in the presence and the glory of god to create an embassy through which heaven will infiltrate that system and can i tell you something it has been prophesied so we will not fail for sure for sure this is what moves ministers who are sensitive to begin to put meetings like this it is in response to prophecy hallelujah it's a blow the alarm in zion and so let's let's try to hurry up and establish something when you begin to walk with the spirit of god the first thing that the lord begins to do when he wants to walk in you is to begin to reveal your inadequacy to you and let me tell you that is the best experience that can happen to a believer the bible says blessed are the poor in spirit what is the reward open your bible and check it's not an exam no no check i'm serious you must know it blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is what sorry i thought some people say shall inherit yes let me say go and read your bible very well hallelujah he said what does it mean to be poor in spirit to be poor in spirit is not it's a blessing Many people have said, ah, the poor in spirit. They don't mention in spirit. They just say poor. Uh -uh. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit. You know why? The word there is those who have come to a point where they are perpetually aware of their inadequacy. That's what it means to be poor in spirit. God designed us to be inadequate. It's a default posture. It won't change. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. That perpetual revelation of their inadequacy and constraint. You know that song that says, When all things that surround me become shadows in the light of you. So in the light of him, different things are swallowed up and it keeps you. My prayer for God every time is, Lord, perpetually keep me poor in spirit when that happens i'm telling you you will be rich in power and rich in grace that sense of satisfaction creates complacency and it ends your journey in the spirit blessed are the poor in spirit so god begins to reveal your true state and usually that happens at a time people are beginning to see the grace of god upon your life and people begin to clap for you and because god loves you he won't say anything but that does not mean he's endorsing what you are doing listen are you listening this is this is a this is a a 
minister session this morning and so you find out that you love God and you are working but you can't see any lady and spare her and God seems to be silent and we call it an endorsement we say it's a confirmation that I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus do you not understand that this was adumbrated in the parable when the Bible says while men slept the enemy planted wheat among tears when the husband man came and saw it the people said should we remove it he said no 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 in other words the wheat is still growing and in the process you may damage the wheat and he says so let them grow that's why when you begin to walk with God he may keep silent over an issue in your life it doesn't mean he's not aware of it by the time you maintain certain levels of structure he will now say okay so let's review this hallelujah When you are about to go for one ministration that will make you king and kings or lord of lords, God will say, okay, this is the time when we'll have seven days, me and you. And then when you go there, you are shouting, oh, power. God said, we're not talking power right here. I, the Lord, test the heart and I try the reins and I reward every man according to my findings. It's amazing. Do you know that the heart factor, when God begins to talk about your heart, begin to rejoice because you are ready to come into experiential sonship. So you've started jumping. Oh, hallelujah, I'm blessed, I'm great, my life is this. I'm a millionaire for Jesus. Ten million will come, it will move me. Lord, I love you. I will buy the car and give everybody. And God says, you were here when they called for 5,000. You couldn't buy a tape. You couldn't buy a book. I gave you an instruction to buy 5,000 for someone. You know, let me tell you, the Bible says every man is right in his own eyes. It's a description of the need for God to see that there's nothing in you. It's, it's, it means that you need God. Hallelujah. So God begins to break your pride. Because you see, every man, the Bible says that... Um, um, the riches of a man is his strong city. It's not necessarily money. Whatever you have that you treasure becomes your source of confidence. When you walk with God, the first assignment is to take it away or keep it under suspense. So that you have nothing else to hold on to. And then he will lead you. Hallelujah. A great general of God shared a story one time. How that when he began to move in the anointing, he was moving in power every time. And he was happy whether he prays or not he found out that mighty things were happening in his meeting and so he was wondering why the fast why the prayer why all of this since the result seems to be the same samson slept with a harlot and what afterwards he lifted a city gate that did not endorse him we have many people who believe listen let me tell you something the mercy of god has boundaries are you listening to me this was structured in the tabernacle the bible tells us that the ark of the covenant had something called shiboleth above it the mercy seat when you shifted the mercy seat there were three things you see inside the ark number one the ten commandments two the rod of jesse the rod of aaron that bordered and number three the sample of the shoe bread that would not decay and when you looked at the law all that you would see was judgment and so rebellion begins to shift a man out of the jurisdiction of god's mercy and a day will come you will step in and what you will face is his judgment the psalmist tells us it's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of god hallelujah so now you are walking great brother great sister you believe that you want to be prosperous oh god give me the anointing upon these people and see what i will do for you and god is looking at your heart hallelujah so your progressive dealings with God starts with a revelation, right, of the true state of your heart. Because you see, this journey of entering into the kingdom of heaven is not an impartation. It, you, you keep cooperating with the spirit. It means you can stop on the way. A day can come, you can say, God, I'm tired to the O oh, Israel, this is where I've come, I've tried. You won't go to hell. But be sure that what you are seeing like Moses, you will see the promised land, but you will not enter. Hallelujah. God begins to reveal the state of your heart. And so this morning, God is going to reveal to us the state of our heart. And then God will guide us. God keeps telling me all the time, son, you have not even seen anything about my glory and my anointing. That's why I get afraid when people begin to talk and say, we have in our midst 
a great man of God. Hey, I just imagine God listening and say, remember, while the applause are coming, I'm hearing his voice louder than the claps. He's saying, remember what we discussed in the secret place. Compared to where you should go, you are just one step out of the cave. That's why, you see, when you have these experiences, these songs that you sing as special number become an expression of truth. So every time you sing it before people, you communicate, you reveal to them the overflow of your secret place and you are able to impart upon them the same fire that drives you. Hallelujah. What is this that I see? The Lord shows me the same flaming sword that I spoke about. I see a flaming sword, silver in color, and is rotating in the atmosphere. God is doing a work in this place. I'd like you to yield to what the Spirit of God is doing. Hallelujah. A flaming sword. I see two flaming swords now. Two flaming swords. And the number two is the symbol of a witness in the realm of the spirit. Father, do what you are doing. Furnish us, make us sons in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so, Joel begins to speak of this army and tells us the structure that this army will carry. But you see, that army you see in Joel is the end product. Are you listening to me? But then, it will not just come by claiming you don't claim that realm hallelujah the bible says let us therefore labor the word labor in the greek there is constrain yourself even as unto death to enter that realm let us therefore labor he said for there remaineth a rest for the people of god although they are the people of god he said there remaineth a rest Hallelujah. Let me show you something interesting. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17. So we bow as we enter the throne room and we come at your feet for you are holy thou art worthy there is none like you for in your presence that is where we must be Lord we bow as we enter the throne room and I cast myself down at your feet Lord for you are holy you are holy there is none like you in your presence that is where we must be for in your presence that is where we must be for in your presence that is where we are changed it's in your presence that is where i must be in your presence that is where I am changed I am changed there is no 
who can prune and change and refine there is no one like my God blessed is he who comes in the name of our God blessed are you for you come to us in the name of our God blessed is he who comes in the name of our God in the name of our God in the name of our God you know why I sang this song I suddenly began to hear the sound of chariots, mighty chariots, mighty chariots, mighty chariots. And I was wondering, suddenly, a light was opened before me. And that was why I began to sing. Learn to respond to spiritual things. This is what is happening to you. Your organs of interaction and expression in the spirit are being exercised so that you are able to discern and walk with the frequency of the spirit. You are able to move at the respiratory rate of the spirit so you know what impulse of the spirit is at every time. But this is how you gain power, structure, and the spirit. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God Jeremiah 17 you're still there verse 9 the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it just stop there look at me what we call heart listen by design the heart of man was designed to house God and his purposes hallelujah it's a realm he designed it it's not just your spirit it's his position in your heart hallelujah and so the holy spirit sits in that position or was designed to sit in that position so that he will become the third throne connecting you with heaven and administrating things there because all the way from scripture there are only two thrones because the third throne was designed to find expression and inhabit that man who is the temple of the holy ghost hallelujah and so for some reason as a result of the fall of man god and his counsel and his purposes fell out of man's heart hallelujah and several things began to gain position into that heart the fear of death being the greatest dread of man and the quest for sustenance being his greatest ambition this is the reason why doctors are rich they are attempting to preserve life is that correct everybody will pay any amount to make sure that he does not exit this earth because he's not sure of what he will face hallelujah and so several things through our journey in life our culture our environment our society mindset different ideologies begin to form ladders hallelujah in our hearts and then the thing that finally gets into your heart is truly your lord whatever it is if it's a woman that's your lord if it's money if it's position if it's anointing if it's ministry i don't care what it is if it's titles so when you get born again jesus i give you my heart be the lord of my life the only thing that was really valid at that point is the revelation of him being savior because that is purely on account of his grace and there is no works lest any man should boast but being lord of your life is a journey not a, an experience one day he said why do you call me lord lord and will not do there is a doing that proves his lordship are you following me please and so he begins to lead you through experiences that compels you 
to see the need for him as lord because you begin to see that the governing influence of his presence is not legislating every sector and facet of your life and as a result you will say oh god like the psalmist search my heart and try my thoughts and if there be any evil way in me lead me to the way everlasting and then god first and foremost leads you to his verdict about you that will be the first embarrassment you probably must have gotten as a great man of god that god tells you this is my conclusion about your heart your heart is desperately wicked they just gave you a word as the meekest man of god and god is saying your heart is this is my verdict I am called alpha omega i don't need to pass through time beginning and the end are present tense in my presence i have done my analysis and here is my conclusion your heart joshua selman is desperately wicked in other words you you should lose the ability to trust yourself outside the message of god because you do not even know what you can become hallelujah david who would not kill saul an obedient young boy was at the wilderness hallelujah when when the prophet samuel began to cry and lament over saul the bible says that the lord spoke to samuel and said for how long shall you weep seeing that have rejected saul as king he said but now take thy horn and go to the house of jesse and there anoint the next king and the bible says they had to go and bring david a smelling boy in the wilderness who was diligent with his hard work you would imagine that that guy would have no guile in him whatsoever to the extent that when they anointed him he went back to the wilderness he didn't even run to the throne that was a sign of submission it was a sign of diligence it was a sign of respect but you watch the analysis of david's heart when he had opportunity twice to kill saul he did not kill him he said i would not do this against god's anointed is that not what we will call the fear of the lord i mean imagine a gentleman like that who will not love him but little did he know that enshrined in his heart were tendencies and encodings that have not reached their kairos time to be made manifest the bible says when he became a king and began to lamp and he began to enjoy in the bounty of the palace he said when men go for war when kings go for war david remained because no man at that point no man would talk to him the real content of his heart began to find expression and one morning while he meandered across his royal corridor suddenly it was like a dream but he looked well and he saw a lady bathing and he said i am king i beg no man i toast no lady I have no respect for any remember the language of kings that we discussed yesterday i have no sorrow i have nothing and he said go and catch that girl and bring for me you see in ancient times they didn't toast there's nothing like i'll answer you after three weeks answer there and now or they will execute you the king did uh, read ahasuerus i mean in, in the book of esther as Azarus said gather them when he chooses one he said the rest go you understand what that means so david take someone's wife where was god at that time where was his fear for god a man who wanted to build a temple for god what suddenly happened to the extent that he called uriah at the war front to come back and he said please go and uh -uh. all work and no play makes jack a dog boy go home and rest and uriah said me i can't go home i will sleep with my wife or do something and that is forbidden for great men because there is time for battle and he was angry and he wrote a letter he gave him his own death sentence he killed him hallelujah and when uriah died guess what when Bathsheba got pregnant for the first child david cried 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 he didn't even say oh yeah now just go to your husband he, he was i hope you know she was still the mother of of solomon i the lord while you are rejoicing and say lord if you give me this anointing or if you give me this church just give me this power and you're even kneeling down and crying tears and mucus are all coming out of your mouth the lord the word of god which is a person not just a book is discerning the thoughts and the intents of your heart are you following me now 
there are certain languages that people use see when you go through certain processes in the spirit you are empowered to discern those who have not gone through it nobody will talk jargons for you on stage no matter what he wears because you can stand and say uh -uh. you know a man that has passed through that stage because when you go through it you are empowered to guide others through it this is why a lot of men of God have no message when they are counseling people. They have not gone through certain experiences that can prepare them to relate with the dealings of people. So someone says, I woke up in the morning and I had a dream. I died and then I came back to life. I said, ah, the devil. Who told you he's the devil? But when you have interacted and done business in the spirit, you can recognize and say, ah, this is a strange sound. But then I know this sound because it's a sign and a symbol of the experiential dealings that God will begin to do in you. He's bringing you to a realm in the spirit called Galatians 2.20 when you'll be left with nothing but the life of Christ. He said, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. And this life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. And a possibility exists to jump classes and even graduate yourself by yourself award yourself give yourself certificate and employ yourself in the spirit and god will just be watching but those classes and lectures you missed i assure you if it is god you will take them again no matter how far you go you will take them again it's embarrassing in the physical realm to sit down in a primary school stool you know these small chairs you used to sit down on this that wouldn't want but many people are coming back to sit down there because they have jumped many classes in the spirit i assure you if it is the lord almighty don't you think god is just in a rush he can wait oh yes he can wait if a whole generation will not be ready he will keep the suspense and zip up the story of that generation until they pass and he will raise a new people god can wait he can wait if we understand this we will know that it's not as if God cannot do without us I assure you he can wait he waited until the generation of Joshua and Caleb perished and passed away only two of them from that generation made it to the promised land the rest died he waited till new people were born and then he told all the people Moses told Joshua and the rest, he said sound a warning and tell them what happened to their fathers so that if they mess up the same thing can happen to them let me tell you something we have experienced many dimensions of god in the body of christ but we have lacked a major dimension in the hebrew is called yirat adonai the fear of the lord the spirit of reverence it's not supposed to scare you it's supposed to bring you into the the point of sonship you see sonship does not just talk about rights it talks about responsibilities hallelujah he said an heir as long as he's a child he differeth not from a slave though he be lord of all he said boys under tutors and governors until the time appointed and so if you do not step into sonship the element in this life and things that are orchestrated will begin to win you and train you until you come to that point where you have a testimony of the Lord for yourself so the Lord begins to walk with you please follow me because this is what God is doing in our hearts suddenly you go to pray and for three hours you are praying you are asking for anointing or you are saying Lord I came to talk to you about my relationship I've been talking to you you are keeping quiet and God will say all right begin to write one lost and you say God what I say is a right two bitterness three you have an evil tendency to the extent that you can kill a human being right and I say Lord it's just because I'm obeying you I know that this is not me you are talking about God is saying you right I want to make you command power in the heavens the first thing is it begins to embarrass you you can choose to bind that spirit away and depart from the presence of God and say I don't like this kind of thing see I like the one that tells me I'm already complete I'm okay I'm fine you see the Bible says if your strength fails you in the day of battle it says your strength is small there are many people whose strength is small and the angel tapped Elijah and he said eat for the journey is far 
he ate and he ate a little and he slept again the angel tapped him he said i know how far you are going you eat because the journey is far and the bible says he went in the strength of that bread 40 days journey let me tell you the preparations and the dealings and the furnishings that god is bringing right now if we do not yield ourselves to it the lapse of it nobody you will not have time the responsibility upon our generation is enormous you may not have certain times to build yourself this way the only way you will do that is to opt out of the army and remain at the back hallelujah search my heart see when you begin to pray like this it's not a lack of the understanding of new creation realities it's a higher realm based on the light of god that you see there is a dimension of god that you will see that you will shout unclean without your brain coordinating your mouth will begin to confess it's not a sign of weakness it is an expression this is how the Lord begins to deal with people. Are you listening to me? For many years, I preached. I moved with power. I did unusual things with anointing and grace and glory. Many realms that I see people bragging about today by the grace of God. These are realms that other people had conquered years before. And then God said, let's begin to walk now. At the apex of this glory, God said, all right, let's get back to the secret place and listen to my own judgment. You have had enough applause from people and when the lord began to x-ray my life i felt like dying i was ashamed of myself and i broke down in my pride and pompousness <laughs> hallelujah and then when jesus appeared to me he left an imprint of his glory when I saw him I felt ashamed of myself I thought I was not born again see all this drama and story people talk I'm telling you when you see him as he is you will be glad that you were alive number one number two he will not need to talk he will answer questions and create more questions that's what will let you know that he see Ezekiel called him a wheel inside a wheel that he didn't know how he said how with like a wheel inside the wheel he will satisfy your current hunger and leave you with a greater one hallelujah i saw him in his glory i know that he's alive and i know that he's loving but i know that he can be a terrible god i'm telling you hallelujah I've said it every time I see people say Apostle Joshua Selman I just remember Apostle Smith Wigglesworth Apostle St. Patrick Apostle Smith Apostle Alexander Dewey and then I just put myself in the picture and feel so ashamed and I just draw back in sackcloth and ashes and said Lord a day will come I will get there I don't condemn myself but I won't lie to myself either Tonight, some of you will need to stop lying to yourself and say, I know God is helping me, but I've not gotten there yet. Lord, let's start this journey. Some of you, after tonight's meeting, will say, Lord, truly, just X all this nonsense and let's start a correct journey again because we have been building nonsense. After our foundation, we started putting zinc. Although it was red span, you would take away that zinc and start building and call the carpenters. He said, Who are these four horns? It's four horns that speak against Judah. He said, I will send carpenters. And they will begin to build. And tell you, Mr. Man, for this part of the wood, you need mahogany. Remove this tree that you are putting there. And let us put a new substance. Hallelujah. But you must open your heart. How many of us are truly ready to open our hearts this morning? I hope that this look you are looking at me is a sign of a contract and a broken spirit not annoyance because i'm not going to stop we are still going to talk about some more your pastor loves you too much to leave you the way you are there will be a foolish and when you arise you will arise with a new glory hallelujah yes don muen sang and said 
distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us that's the prophecy distant shores and the islands will see your light that's what is going to happen nigeria is going to present a portrait of apostolic christianity yes i saw it in 2005 the lord told me there will be 37 jesus channels in this station when i said it many people talk stories one by one they are already coming but even that the real ones are yet to come apostolic blueprints that will present the true stature and character of the church it will happen this is why god is dealing with us like this it doesn't cost god anything it doesn't cost god anything when he, he said my son give me your heart he didn't say give me your offering or your seed or your tithe give me your heart first every time i pray and i say this will be my testimony distant shores and the islands will see your light there will be a decree of light and power we will walk like gods upon the earth men who are thoroughly furnished we understand the language and the handwritings of the spirit we have gone through the process through the furnace of affliction thoroughly walked upon by the spirit we answer to only one name and one voice there is one captain leading his army and then we will stand and display the excellency of his majesty to principalities and powers where we will stand and keep captive the forces of darkness over territories you step into a territory without negotiation visa or no visa transportation by the spirit you step in and you shake governments and territories and there is only one name that will be exalted but this is the process This is the process that will lead to that kind of glorious army there is no room for disappointment and around three was with jesus christ every day of 2005 every day there are human beings that walk like that on the earth every day of 2005 hallelujah every day you imagine that there is a realm that is existing like this what are we bragging for when there are people walking with Jesus Christ and they ask her, didn't you ask him for power and healing and anointing? She said, I'm not interested. Based on what I saw, after my voyage with him, I'm not interested in these things. I found out that I insult myself. There is, once I see a higher light, he said, they that are in darkness have seen a great light that makes them to leave that light. He said, if your eyes, if the light that you are seeing is darkness, how great is that darkness? Many people, what they are calling that light now, will become darkness when the true light comes up. He said, but the true light that lighted the world has come. The true light. The heart condition. Let me tell you something. No matter how long you fast and pray and roll on the floor, that school of the heart that refiner's fire there are some cups in the spirit you cannot fast them away you must drink them everything to the last drop if you want to carry this apostolic and prophetic mantle to the nations no way there's no dodging it when god finishes with you even one billion will not have an effect in you it's not that you are trying to pray it out of your life you have assumed a posture in the spirit that it becomes impossible for these things to take its place in your life you have taken a pledge and allegiance of fraternity with god hallelujah many people cannot stand the loss of babylon that great harlot you know why because she's coming strong in nigeria a wind is blowing her into this country and she's stepping in wearing her apparels of harlotry and in the artistry of her wardom she's moving around with that cup seeking for people that she will give souls and gold and silver he said but the remnant of the house of jacob there are those who will say uh -uh, you may not see trees no problem no matter how long it will take us we will bear root downwards because you know the advantage of bearing root for 
all little shrubs they have to wait for rainy season but when you bear root downwards you will hit the aquifer and no longer depend on seasons for your nourishment he said he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams others are waiting for rain but this one is planted he has gotten to the fountain and when men are saying my life is spiritually dry suddenly you come with a new order and they say from whence cometh this wisdom what many Jews are doing is what the least person in this army will be doing today i am convinced and i believe i believe that in that time there will no longer be things we hold called miracle services because there will not be need for it again when we there, there will be a new order of what commands respect in this earth and those who cannot stand in the spirit to survive that stress test of the spirit will pack out certainly the lord began to teach me about territorial influence when we went to a land in just for a crusade they said it had not rained in that land i didn't even know about it we stepped into the land and i tell the truth and i lie not within minutes cloud formed from nowhere and it began to rain now i didn't understand i was just happy we we're all excited that god was doing great things and then I said, I want to see the king in this land. They said, ah, young boy, you are asking for too much. I said, we will see the king. Because I'm a king. This is not, I'm a king. I'm, no, I am a king. It's not a confession. It's the truth. But where is your crown? And where is your scepter of judgment? And where is the signet ring that you stamp the stains of the spirit? Because when the prodigal son came back to his father, his father gave him a ring. And without that ring, there is no stamping of the word of a king. That's why people say, become and it does not become. Do this and it does not be. I pray that God in this meeting will put that scepter of greatness. That you can legislate and dethrone principalities. And speak to the heavens and orchestrate territorial influence. Do you believe what you are hearing? But are you ready to let him walk your heart? It's not going to be one day. Huh? So don't just think it's one day retreat. It will embarrass you. It will sting your ego. It will reduce you to a point where you won't feel guilty. But you will be convicted. You will know what it means for the sword of the spirit to press through the heart of a man. And it brings you to that point where you die. And you come into a realm called Galatians 2.20. It's not just a statement in scripture. It's a realm in the spirit. You assume a posture. And you are unshakable and immovable. And it is only what God wants. You become an expression are you listening to me now the the thing is that while you are going through all of these things little will you know that you are being transformed for every level you get into a badge is given to you that every force of darkness in the realm of the spirit can know your level and they can reckon it's a reward system otherwise there is no the justice of god is not at work there when you go through those things a badge is given this is why the demons looked at the sons of skiva they said uh -uh, you are sons but you are not of the lord you are of skiva you are sons of a priest not sons of god he said jesus i know because we saw an identity with him paul followed that path too 17 years in the wilderness of arabia surviving the tests and the buildings of the spirit he has gained this power he said but you just saw a lot of things and you were mimicking it and it proved how weak they were by beating them and stripping them of one man there is a realm where you will rise when god deals with you where sickness and all these divine healing divine health struggles will be you will even forget about it it becomes an old syllabus because it's a mountain you have climbed he said there is a path which no foul hallelujah it's not the issue of i will not be sick you won't be 
he said no inhabitant in zion shall say i am sick but the condition is zion in zion there's something about zion innumerable company of angels where the spirits of just men made perfect move freely are you listening to me you become a wonder you become a career of the presence and the glory of god the essence of all that he attempts to communicate by time you have no agenda of yourself every agenda is a derivative of that which you receive from him for every season no matter how many times people pressure you and when you look at that great harlot come to you you won't even pray about it you are too busy walking it doesn't become a prayer point again hallelujah they check you in your hotel room and one glorious sister comes and says, i was wondering i by the way you are looking restless during the ministration i just thought if we could talk let me tell you something that happened I was in worry. God doesn't send you there. Don't go. Ask relevant questions before you go. Praise the Lord. And after a wonderful session with the Spirit, I just lay down and I was just blessing the Lord for mighty things in the meeting. And I ordered food. There were prostitutes around outside, but when I entered, I ordered food. Suddenly there was a knock in my door. Ah! When I opened that door, the lady that brought the food and the way she was dressed, I just stood. I thought about my life, my destiny, the call of God upon my life. Ah! I collected the food. I said, how much? How much? She forgot to bring water. She said, oh, I forgot. I said, no problem. I collected it. I kept it. The Bible says, flee. It didn't say pray. I gave her the money. Was it one five? I said, just take. You bring change for me. Later, she knocked again. She brought the change. I closed it and locked the door. I knew that this lady was operating based on spirit. It wasn't just seduction. It was a spirit. I was on my way to quietly come back to Kaduna. You leave Kaduna sound. You come back with something else. Hallelujah. Then that's not the whole story. At about one a.m. in the night. I was counseling someone on phone just talking you know and then i had quiet to oh, everywhere was quiet the receptionist had gone to sleep everybody i just had gah, gah, gah. as soon as i opened the door ah i don't want to begin to describe what i saw but let don't imagine it just imagine pure things don't think of all these things The lady says, sorry, are you the receptionist here? I didn't even know what to say again. I said, are you not seeing my room? I said, don't say this kind of thing again. No. She said, please, I want you to come and walk a guy out of my room. I jammed the door. I locked it. I pleaded the blood. And I prayed in tongues. Satabala katabalada. Colorful and is bright. I must get there beautiful glorious i must get there my future is bright a hard lord cancels your days of travail in the presence of god see there is a depth of revelation that you need to stay away from women to access when david wanted bread he came and he said is there bread and the priest said there is no ordinary bread there is only hallowed bread he said here's the condition if your men have not had any affair with women they can touch of that hallowed bread ladies you are wonderful oh? you are a blessing to the world but on that day ah, when i woke up in the morning straight i packed my load and ran to the airport they said there is no time i said oh, wait at least in the airport everybody is there I would have slept with that girl quietly. Who would know? Won't you come back anointed? If it was you, what would you do? Don't laugh. What would you have done? Many of you at that point say, Hey! He said, go and come back. Let me think about it. I say, Lord, if I escape this, you must console me oh, with all this. It's an allegiance of fraternity. 
you have made up your mind and said, Lord, I'm on your side whatsoever. Are you listening to me? I am on your side. You must mean it. Your heart. He said, my son, give me your heart. God must take a hold of your heart. Hallelujah. So you go to minister and maybe you were supposed to raise an offering for the church or do something and you do and you just find out that you didn't hear how much. Later they told you it was 40 million. You call the Jew and say, come, are you joking? They brought on a radium of 500,000. Do I look like your mate? I was sweating here. This is what goes on in our many men of God and their garbage. They say, oh God, better do something. Otherwise I will disgrace you in this church. But the guy, when he came up on stage, he said, you are my God. You are my all. And God was just looking. And the angels were joining too. You are my all. Have you seen people do that? You are my God. You are my king. And they are already eyeing somebody in the choir. You are very stupid. You are my Lord. You are my this. Which acting is going on for heaven's sake in the church? You come home and you see everybody watching every kind of thing, doing every kind of thing. I used to know of a man of God who would sit down and watch pornography freely with his concubine. He taught a very dangerous message that immune him from any questions. And I tell you, that guy saw dangerous power and anointing in his life and ministry. Hallelujah. And then one day, one occulting girl, he dragged the girl to go and deliver the girl or pray for her or whatever. Samson, I will arise as before. And that guy got a shock of his life. A very dramatic shock of his life. That lady began to give him word of knowledge and tell him everything and said, this moment, I can drop you dead if I want to. This moment. The guy looked, she told him different things, told him the amount in his room, told him everything and told him the spirit in this room. He said, right now, if you try it, I will do it. And honestly, she would have done it. The guy began to ask God for forgiveness. She said, it's a lie. You are only embarrassed. That's what she told him. She said, this is what I'm seeing in the spirit. You are not repentant. Because everybody in hell who asks Jesus for forgiveness, when he doesn't respond, they start abusing him. He's not genuine. Are you listening to me? Ah, God is cleaning this house and bringing see it's because you are already bearing fruit you see he that bears fruit my father will pull so let hope rise darkness trembles in your holy light let hope rise that's what is happening for darkness trembles in your holy light say lord i give you my heart your ambitions begin to give way listen when god begins to walk on you pride is the first sign that there is progress in that walk your pride is dead once that begins to happen to you by yourself, not as a result of an embarrassing situation, you come to a point where humility becomes a realm, not a temporary state of pretense. You know, women of God do it. When they're about to give you mic, you just bow down. And then the, the pride comes out there. Humility is not going to sit down at the back. When we came, they honored us in front of here. But it's a state that acknowledges that there is one who is mightier than I and that I'm not ashamed of my inadequacy outside of him regardless of what they call you John said there cometh one mightier than I in many circles that means the Jew I'm talking of the king of kings because this is the portrait of this army where you become an usher in the spirit pointing men to a higher king than yourself you don't just camp around them 
where you are not embarrassed to apologize to people whether the greatest or the least hallelujah a broken and a contrite heart the secret place becomes for you a matter of life and death not just to go and learn church languages he said as the deer panted after the water brooks you stop going to god because you are looking for a message to preach or you are looking for charisma and then while that is happening you will not know that there is a build up of power there is a build up of authority one day you will step out and God will test run what he has been doing in your life to console you and you will come back with mighty testimonies he began to deal with the disciples and expose to them one by one the state of their heart and they did not know how transformed they had become and one day he sent them and the Bible says they came back rejoicing if you were truly with Jesus be sure you will come back rejoicing they say even the devils were subject to us through thy name and he said do not rejoice because the spirits are subject to you he told nathaniel because i have said these things you have believed he said verily verily you will see greater things you will see the heavens open and you will see the son of man ascend and descend i'm stretching your hunger for him so your hunger doesn't just say more of you many of us say more of you but it's vague you don't even know what you are asking for hallelujah get to a point where you say lord you have taken all the glory you have taken all the praise you have taken all dominion you have taken all the praise and you have made them yours you have made them yours Ninaimaka, naimaka Naimaka Sujada Ninaimaka Ninaimaka I give you the highest praise I give you Lord I give you I give you the highest praise You have taken all the glory You have taken all the praise You have taken all dominion you have taken all the praise Lord you have made them yours Ni naimaka sujata Ni naimaka Ni naimaka Ni naimaka sujata Naimaka Ninaimaka Sujada Pride dies Unforgiveness dies The weight and that sin Is a sin then That we are surrounded By so great a cloud of witnesses It says let us therefore lay aside Every weight Every constraint And the sin that doth easily beset us So that it will permit us to run The sin that doth easily beset us that loss that makes you vulnerable that loss that makes you answer the call of babylon the hollow tree of her who is a compromising one you come to a point where your life becomes an expression of his glory everything about you from your words to your life i'm not talking of speaking slowly or speaking with piety uh -uh. it's a state when men look at you you reveal a personality you have stopped revealing yourself you have assumed when a spirit possesses a man it begins to manifest itself through that man it forces the man to assume the posture are you listening to me so when a man is possessed he begins to behave like a dog behave like this when the holy spirit takes a hold of you he doesn't just take a hold of you to anoint you leave that anointing issue you notice we've not mentioned anointing here yet uh -uh, now is not the time for it that time is coming the conference is still on we're building this is the second session because many people like anointing calm down calm down for you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin you must first take away the wine skin and bring in new 
and then you will fill it with new wine listen many of you don't know what god is doing in this ministry at this point you will see glory and power not just in the pastor's life alone but it will begin to it will be a testament a karagma that people will be identified with men and women who carry such glory and presence where although you are anointed to the extent that you can do everything but you can still clean the seat he has taken all the praise he has taken all dominion he has taken all and you move in power where the lord gives you one million and you say lord is this the feeling of millions it has lost hold over my life what do you want me to do with it and god says i gave you so that you sow it into a ministry say your majesty at your call without delay without nothing it will go nothing no one no place possesses the ability to take his place in your life it's an obsession an irrecoverable one where you love him more than anointing he said behold i show you a more excellent way for if you can speak with tongues of men and of angels and have no love for god you are of nothing if you know all prophecies and all mysteries and you do not sustain that passion you are nothing even if you have failure to the highest extent that you can lay your life for your brother and you do not possess that love for him he said there remained these three faith the commodity of transaction in the spirit hope that empowers us to be optimistic but he said out of all of these ones the greatest is love for him how much do you love him he that loveth me john 14 21 he that keepeth my commands is he that loves me and i will love him and the father will love him and we will manifest ourselves to him in the next few minutes we are going to cry in a way in this place i don't know how you want to do it are you listening to me everybody is going to drop every title tonight there's no apostle joshua selman while you are doing your own thank god there's a carpet here I'm going to cry. This is a minister's meeting. Are you listening to me? There will be a genuine cry. Instrumentalist, when that is the time, you will clash the cymbal and let us connect with the heavens and raise a cry and say, Lord, search my heart. This is why many of us have not entered some realms. It's not demons. It's the love of God to you. Many musicians, after going to music schools, they say they want to connect with this person and this person and that person. One day I, I ministered somewhere. Afterwards, some youth came and met me and they said, we're inviting you as, his, as a, a music minister in our program. I said, I don't sing. Bro. I'm not a music minister. But when I'm in his presence, I sing and he likes it. And he decided to bless me with an aura of his presence when a man sings you are able to discern the realm from which he's projecting from because he communicates his secret place and it comes like fire upon your spirit you may not remember all the words he's saying but an imprint he has become a vessel unto honor it leaves a mark in your spirit and so for days you wake up and you are crying you don't know why you are crying you cannot explain it so you are running away from people because you don't want any embarrassment but that song you had you will hear it in your dream you will hear it when you wake up for i vow to god that if at any time i will stop representing him he should take my life it's an allegiance of fraternity and I mean it from the depths of my heart. It doesn't matter what. It doesn't matter where. I have come to a point where I have seen the vanity of life outside of Christ. He becomes absolute fulfillment. Greater than ministry. Greater than husband. Greater than wife. Greater than prosperity. But then when you follow him, these things will follow you in successions you cannot stop. Hallelujah. I shared it the other time. Let me just share it just to encourage us since we are ministers. When Lagos, just serving the Lord, when someone walked up to me, a woman, 
after the service she just got down on her knees and said the lord led me to sow a plot of land to your ministry in leki in lagos a plot of land in leki it's like giving you a plot of land in maitama in abuja that's somebody's prayer point for how many days do you know that the arm of the lord is not too short that he cannot save nor is his ear deaf he said but in between him and you is your iniquity iniquity is not sin iniquity is a perpetual willful continuous state of rebellion against the governing influence of the christ that's what is called iniquity that's what takes men to hell that's why the bible says in that day they shall say we healed in your name we prophesied in your name he didn't answer and say it's a lie he said depart from me ye workers of iniquity he said they draw nigh to me with their mouth but their heart is far you come to a point where in your jokes in your joy in your phone christ saint patrick said it christ before me christ above me christ around me christ in my head christ in my hands i am an expression I've become like a puppet i only move under his influence and it so happens that romans chapter 8 tells us that when this happens this is the characteristic feature of they that we call the sons of god he said for as many meaning not everyone will be interested for as many who will allow themselves to come under this sovereign influence of the king so that their life is only at the impulse of his word he said even though he gives you what will constrain you he said let this come pass away from me he said but nevertheless not my will but yours those who have laid down their lives and then you will find out that there is true life when you lay your life down now lay it all down again to hear you say that i You are my desire. No one else will do. No one else will do. For nothing else can take your place. Oh, to feel the warmth of your. Help me find a way, sing it from your heart while you're seated. Help me find a way, bring me back to you. You're all the one, sing it to him, and you're all I ever needed. Help me know you are near. Oh, 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 I want your everything I need. Your all I ever needed. to a higher realm of God help me know you for he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of his wings and I will say of the Lord is my strength my rock and my fortress hallelujah tonight the Lord is probing our hearts under the light of his glory 
Yes, I know you are a man of God. I know you are an apostle, you are a prophet, you are a teacher. But can I be alone with you tonight? Because I have some work that I want to do in your heart. Hallelujah. Today, many of us are going to make a genuine decision for Jesus to be Lord of our lives. Lord, owner, master. That your life will move. You will keep pride away forever in your life. Today is the day you will forgive people. You will release people. You will lay aside those weights and the sin that doth easily beset you. For who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully. As a result, he shall receive a blessing from the Lord. God wants to anoint you. God wants to give you a charisma of sonship. But I need you to know that this hard thing, above and beyond everything, Hallelujah. Above and beyond everything. We are going to release all. All I want is you. Take over. Take over. Till I am consumed. By nothing. Nothing else but you. All I want is you. Take over again. Take over. Till I am consumed. By nothing, nothing, nothing. Nothing else. In the next 10 minutes, listen. I want you to feel free. Thank God the auditorium is large. We are going to raise a cry in this place. This is not a congregational cry. You and God. You are going to say, Lord, the Lord is going to be revealing things to you. And you say, Lord, I make my allegiance. Hallelujah. While that is going on, drama, keep on. Please scatter yourselves around and begin to pray. Take this seriously. You reign, you reign, oh Lord. You reign, you reign. Come on, cry from your spirit. This is the generation that seek thy face, oh Jacob. You reign. You reign, you reign, oh Lord. You reign, you reign. Cry out your heart to Him. You reign. Take over my finances. Take over my life. Take over my anointing. Take over my reputation. Break that pride. Break that pompous spirit. Break that unforgiving spirit. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every man that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but of wood and of clay. Some are unto honor and some are unto dishonor. If a man will forge himself, if a man will concentrate himself, if a man will separate himself, he shall be a vessel of honor, meet for the master's use. I give you my heart. Take 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 my heart.
matter what you give me no matter where you take me no matter what level i am an ambassador i only represent the government i lay it aside let the old go the worship team sang yesterday let go and let go let go many of us need to release it go ahead and begin to release people right now that devil of unforgiveness will not stop you from entering a new level go ahead I let go I release offenses the Bible says in that day they shall be offended I let go I let go bitterness I let go backbiting Lord blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God I step into a new order of love and power and fire and passion and commitment let the fruit of the spirit be at work in me let me confirm to the fullness of the character circumcision that's why I saw those swords in the spirit you have my all Lord I mean it from my heart you have my all you can trust me on this it doesn't matter listen it doesn't matter what you are going through it's not an excuse to compromise Lord, you seem so far away A million miles on what it seems today Because this is why a lot of people compromise We give excuses because of what I'm suffering And though I haven't lost my faith I must confess right now That it's hard for me to pray But as you give grace this morning, oh, His grace is mighty. With all that's in my heart, I will sing. I will pray. Conquer your challenges, even in my darkest hour. Through the sorrow and the pain, I will sing. I will pray. see that God wants to do one or two things here. We're out of time. Just give me a few minutes. Hallelujah. 
I want to pray for a certain people. God is granting grace. There is a work happening. I see these things in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. And God is bringing a separation. Many of you have cried and have, have said, Lord, I need you. You will experience his grace this morning. In these few minutes. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. That there be a fire. When we we take our time to minister to the sick and all impartations when maybe when I come back for the other sessions but we are building hallelujah it's important so that when the anointing comes it will last and you will command power in the heavens he said this is my beloved son he said John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance and Job said all the days of my appointed time I will wait Lift your hands in one minute and say, Lord, I thirst for you. And I long to be in your presence. For in your presence, that's where I Oh Lord In your presence That's where I belong I am shows me four angels standing in each of the rows in this place now I don't see these angels all the time but every time I see them I know that God is doing work in individuals not ministries and I believe that they will move across this place they will give you a heart of a heart of flesh and they will turn you oh it will happen for with it again, this is strange. I see water flowing, but there's fire in it. Water with fire, yet the fire is not quenched. This is what will happen. Hmm. So, will you open up the gates? Will you open up the gates? Will you open up the door? Ezekiel said, from the east side of the temple came the glory of the Lord. Would you open up the gates? Would you open up the gates? And just as God is doing that, listen. For many of you who have been oppressed, oppression of all sorts, it will leave. Because many of you love God, but you have paid a lot of price. Some of these things are orchestrated by the power of darkness. God will visit you this morning. It wasn't my intention to do anything. You believe that? Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Ushers, please help me with the hands. Lift your hands. Help me with the singing. All right, now I see these angelic activities. Lord, I pray, lift your hands. Father, like a mighty rushing wind, your people have traveled. It comes like fire in the name that is above all names. I don't know what it is I see, but this row, I stand in this row right now. Let the power of the Spirit move across this building. Please bring them out. Shatata, Rapate Lekosa, Mambritaya, help me with the Simba. Shekres Tatali Marata, lift your hands. Oh God, I pray that you walk across this place. That these men that you have separated all across this place, Pareketeha, like a winnowing fire. Atalika, Mareta, Rakaya, Mantereka, Lekoskotaya, bring them out. Katalia, Rapaska Diara. Rakata Prestiga, bring them out. Kaposha, Marekata, Ratariana, Lepros Kososa, Rekea, Ekonto, Lepos Kate, Ekereka, Makarataba, Rafas Kataria, Lepros Koposata, Persataya, no devil's hands, now power of darkness, no time.
God. No devil stand. No devil stand. No devil stand. At the back, the Lord shows me someone. Barata Kata Nebosa. Rapata Kaskia. Aparoso Pia. I see an angel walking at the back. Barata Kosho Preska. He creata la bata. Outside devil, let this girl go now. Let this girl go now. Let this girl go now. Now. Let her go. Let her go now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, for I see you in the realm of the Spirit. Let her go by the power that is in the name of Jesus. Bring you liberty. But the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Sister, look at me. Look at me. Just look at my eyes. Just look at my eyes. In the name that is above all names, I pray you will feel something rising from your stomach. It's the fire of the Spirit. You will never recover from it. Lord, I pray. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, stir up this fire in our spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I need you. I need you. Nothing and no place. No one else will do. You will never be the same. I let the devil that torments you in the night in your dream. Go. 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 Let her go. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Listen, those of you who are here, this doesn't mean it's all of you, but I'm going to pray for you angel is standing by me and is asking me to just walk through as I walk through listen as I walk through praying in tongues one by one there will be impartations and purgings and cleansings and healings this is what the Lord tells me to do Shada karaposa prata kataba ladaba koroso praha rabba kata proso sopra kata kata meleba raka paroso proto sopa ranta prasha talakaya raka talabondo La costo pratica, la parecata, la banda prosto paia, reteca preta pelecate, la parecata, la basta posta bandicria, atalata bacapa, la batata ponso protos. Sister, the Lord will use you in a mighty way. What you are getting this morning is an impartation. It comes like fire upon your bones. For the heavens will be open over you and you will begin to walk in parts of the spirit. I do not know you, but the Lord tells me He will make a wonder out of you. My dear, look at me. That foul devil. Just lift your hands, for you will not hide behind her. Come out now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I speak to you, I challenge you, affecting your body. I speak right now. I see fire being poured on you. I expose that hand of Satan in the name of the Lord Jesus. I set you free by the power of the Spirit. Your health, I restore that devil because this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a devil standing and enchanting things over your life. This is what I see. And that's what is responsible for the health challenge you are suffering. But right now I speak in the name of Jesus. We cannot stand it by the power of the Holy Ghost. Be set free. Now. Now. In the name of Jesus. I see fire being poured on you. God is doing a mighty work. And you will not be able to stand it. In the name of Jesus. Parata shataba. Randeka toka balakata. is showing me the last four digits of someone's number 8761 8761 87 I'm seeing this number just faded and I see the last four digits 8 
seven six one i don't know what arrangement it is arranged but this is what the lord shows me. in the name of the lord jesus i command because there is oppression there i see in the name of jesus the hand of satan is taken away from that life madam please lift your hands for the lord wants to visit you my god and my king according to that which you have shown me now now let there be a fire of visitation upon you there's oil being poured on your hands that's what i see in the spirit choir lady right that girl seated there you are the one please lift your hands i don't know what an angel is doing close to you but the lord asked me to stretch my hands towards you lord i pray from your left hand the lord shows me to your right hand there will be a release of power power that will distinguish you and the lord says i should tell you it is the favor of the lord the favor of the lord the favor of the lord for that's your heart cry the favor of the lord the lord gives it unto you Hallelujah. I pray that everyone who should be in this meeting, I speak to the atmosphere that God is, God needs to do some thorough work and this is a very prophetic conference. No matter how far, may the Lord bring them to come and receive of this thing. In the name of the Lord Jesus, and I pray for you, let there be an irrecoverable hunger this is a separation unto sonship the lord has begun the work it's not just a thing hallelujah we have spoken about sonship in the next series we'll now talk about the manifestation what is the blueprint and the structure that sons are supposed to assume how the bible says in joel that they will hear the voice of the lord i give you all the praise to you be all the glory in the name of the lord in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Ghost you know what I did I was not looking I was looking at you suddenly I didn't see you again I saw a veil and the Lord said take it that's what I did it wasn't an invitation for you it was a miracle God has given you Jesus Father I pray that all through this conference we pray for every other servant of God who will be mounting this pulpit move powerfully through them let your counsel be communicated building upon this that has been laid anoint them oh god in a mighty way and do wonders with them and i pray for your people that they don't just become emotional for now and leave it but let this be an experience in the name of jesus that they will open up their hearts to you and allow you to prune them and bring them to that place of grace. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lift your hands and celebrate Him. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Catabranda Catacos, Catabranda Catapacotosco to break a take a look at her. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.